for today's episode, we're doing something a little bit different. So instead of opening uh, ten pounds worth of product, we are opening a lot more. We are. I am opening nine packs of Power of the Elements, uh, combining three episodes into one. Consider it like a mega episode. Um, in return for opening this much, uh, I'll play three times as many duels, which will be kind of fun. But the main reason I want to do this is Power of the Elements has a lot of good stuff that we need and just a lot of good cards in general. So I'm just going to crack right straight. That did not work. Crack straight into the opening. Okay. Already a nice pickup, Sprite Red. Uh, I'll put Sprites here. Digit Jamming, Melfi Wally, uh, Tiananmen's Suplik, Scareclaw Scare Straddle for the Super, uh, Pit Knight, the Early, Mortronic Scannon, Mortronic Aphron, and I'm not even going to attempt to butcher that card's name. Back number two. Melfi Wally, Mary Melfi's, Vernison of the Flowering Fields, another Sprite Red, another Scarce Claw Straddle, a Goatee Fish, Life Extreme, a Goatee Chain, and a Gem. So far, two Sprite Red is pretty good. Another card we needed, Sprite Smashers, Sprite Gamma Burst, I'll put it with Sprite, Crosskeeper, Overfusion, Tier Element Shiren, Most Distance, Deepest Depths, Morphtronic Converter, Nightmare, The Dark Bonder, and Nemesis Elephant. Nemesis Elephant. Uh, Crosskeeper, a Tier Element, we'll make a Tier Element pile down here. Tier Element Crime, a Sprite Carrot, an ultra rare pieces light of the goatee. Okay, and nothing. I think we pulled another TR Elements earlier. I think it was in here somewhere, so I'll put it in now. Yeah, it was this one. We're in, I think we're at the halfway point roughly now. So, Sprite Pixies, TR Elements Havness, Ice Jade Creation, Brilliant Rose. Exosister Returnia, Gadget Gamer, Morphtronic Telephone. That's a pretty good card. Uh, and Scar of the Bendred. We've had some decent pulls so far, but nothing too much. We have Brilliant Rose. Ooh. That is a ace. I see a secret. Branded Expulsion, Vernicence, Trial Med Suplex, and an Exosister Martha. Not bad. Crawl Soma, and nothing much. We pulled an Ultra and a Secret. It's not the ones that we need, but we did pull an Ultra and a Secret, which is pretty good. Ice J Creation, Vernison, Branded in Central Dogmatica, T Elements, Mathmex Circular, pretty good. Uh, Amazement, and nothing else. Last two packs, let's hope we can pull something good. Looking for the Sprite Xyz, so hopefully we can pull that. We got a Sprite Gamma Burst, a Merry Melfi's, a Melfi Wally, an Overfusion, I saw the Fire Attribute, Eureka, the Flame Buddy, Goatee Chain, and yeah, not much. Last pack. Hopefully we can get something good. T Elements Crime, Merry Melfi's, T Elements, T Elements, Elemental Hero, Spirit of Neos. Pretty good. Terra's, wait, Terra's the over is not a bad card. Double Dust Tornado Twins, what does this do? I'm actually curious. Target any number of set cards in your spell and trap zone, return them... Uh, target any number of cards in your spell and trap zone, return this card to the hand along with that many cards, minimum one, then you can set spell traps from your hand equal to the number of cards returned. Hand by this effect. Interesting. So, I'll go over the hollows and the pulls. Um, in terms of high rarity cards, we pulled 
a secret rare and an ultra rare. It was not the ones we're looking for, but I don't think we can use Exosister Martha, but it is a good card in Exosister. And uh, Pace is Light of the Goatee. You can banish this card, you control, especially one fish from your hand, except itself during the standby phase. Special summon. It's okay, might be able to use it. And uh, we also pulled Super Rare, uh, Elementary Spirit of Neos. Arika the Flame Buddy, Mathematic Circular, Exosister Britannia, and Double Scareclaw Straddle. Interesting. Now, while we didn't pull anything great in the terms of like hollows, well, we pulled an Ultra and a Secret from Nine Packs, which is pretty good. We did pull a lot of sprites. Uh, we got two red, which is pretty good. One carrot, one pixies, two gamma burst, and one smashes. So, considering with how the deck works, we might be able to squeeze in a sprite engine. Probably. Yeah, these cards will probably find their way into the deck. These two are very good, and this one's okay. You know, we can we can definitely play with these cards. And then randomly, I'll just go over the TR elements that we got. In terms of the trap cards, we have pulled one Meta Noise, wait, two Crime and two Shrulik. I don't know how to play TR element. Who knows? I might play it, but interesting. We also pulled Triple Havness and one Shriven, which is pretty good. Considering tier ratios, <laughs> did not show this off with the supers, I probably should uh, Anyway, that's the opening. Um, I'd say fairly solid for the opening. Nothing out of the ordinary, but pulling a secret rare Exosystem Martha is very cool. Uh, yeah, so I'll go into deck changes and see what we can add into the deck. So, we're doing a deck profile of the deck because... There's going to be a lot of changes over the next few episodes, and after that our deck probably will no longer be an Ice Barrier deck, and we'll probably change it to a different archetype, uh, just with uh, cards gained. So I'll consider this the last time we're actually playing like an Ice Barrier deck, and I'll get into the actual deck profile. So for the Ice Barrier cards, we're playing uh, one Revealer. While it is really good for combos, it does require a discard and it waterlocks you, which is not great compared to some of the other cards. Um, two speaker, uh, because it's a free special and you can usually get it off and it can make loads of bodies on field. Uh, and then one defender and one hexer, uh, just for different levels of tuners. And then triple copies of medallion because being able to search tons of bodies is really, really good. Uh, that's all the Ice Barrier cards we're playing in the main deck. I don't really think any of the others are kind of worth playing at this point. Uh, we're obviously playing Triple Diva, best normal summon in the deck. Just summons a level 3 or a lot of Sea Serpent for free. We have tons of good targets. Uh, and a Deep Sea Aria to search the Diva. Uh, and on top of that, we're playing one Yamarato Orochi and a Deep Sea Aristan. Uh, this card's effectively a pseudo monster born when summoned off Deep Sea Diva if we were to have a Water and Grave. And uh, this card can be treated as a level eight tuner, which actually combos off really well with this to make um, a level nine synchro. Uh, it can't make Trishula though, Trishula requires specifically two non-tuners. Uh, for frogs, we're playing Triple Swap Frog, an amazing extend to get so many bodies on field. And we're playing two Dupe Frog and two Ronin Toten, uh, just because they're decent to see and we can pretty much gain uh, a lot of card advantage off of uh, these bodies, so generally they're worth playing. Uh, for generic extenders, we're playing two Silent Angler, one Tangy Spirit Shathana, one Aqu and one Aqua Spirit. Um, I feel like this is probably the best ratio of extenders. Uh, I like playing multiple just because 
Uh, they're just generally useful and they're all level 4, which is probably the best level for this deck. Uh, now time for the spice. Uh, one TR element Shiren. Triple Huffness. And one uh, Merrily. Uh, Merrily. Um, Shiren is just a free body on field. Uh, Hoffness is also a free body on field if our opponent activates a monster effect, which they probably will. And Meru Mills cards, which works well. Because we are playing uh, two Shootlek, one Metanoise, and two Crime. Just because these trap cards are actually like really, really good. If we just have one TR element on field, so it gives us interaction. They're actually really good when milled uh, from the deck to gain us advantage, which is why we're playing them. Uh, because the ability to gain advantage quickly and just being able to control the game a little more is what we needed. And we got them in the pack, so we might as well play them. Uh, we're also playing double surface and one salvage for just generic water extenders. Uh, overall pretty good. Uh, and then triple crackdown and one core by the grave for generic cards. Uh, because stealing a monster is really good and... Call of Grave allows our combo to go through. So uh, that's the main deck. Uh, for the extra deck, we are playing the two Trishla Zero and the two Trishla. Generally pretty good. I feel like might be the best ratio for it. Uh, one Ravenous Croco Dragon for our last level nine. Really good, draws us cards, probably gets us into our traps. For level sevens, we're playing uh, one Gun Near. One Prima Donna, and the new Asken, the Bicorned Goatee. Uh, it's a Banish, but it doesn't really, on the opponent's field, but it doesn't really cost us any resources apart from the monsters used to make it, compared to something like uh, Gunman, which does. Uh, we're playing two Brianak and one Deloran, because... Um, it's just popped cards in this game's attack. I feel like this is probably the worst one out of these two. Well, return, Brunak returns cards to hand. Uh, one of Abyss Dweller is the only rank four. Really, really good. Uh, and then just uh, Rinsus Coral and Enemy, Crystron, Haki Firebrax, and Area the Water Charmer for our Link 2s. This doesn't come off that op often, but these two are really, really good for extension and let us do some stuff. Uh, now for the side deck. An Ice Barrier, which I think is actually pretty good, is Medium of the Ice Barrier. Because it's really good against trap decks like Eldritch, because you lock them to one spell trap per turn, so they have to specifically stop it with some cards. So let's say they have like Sanguine and um, Aquero. Uh, they can't get rid of this, because if they activate Sanguine, they're locked out of spell traps for the rest of the turn, which is really, really good. Uh, and just lets you beat trap decks fairly easily, because it's a pretty big, big body. Um, Triple Fiendish Chain if we need extra traps alongside a Pointer of the Red Lotus, which is pretty good this format, so probably going to keep a Pointer in. Uh, triple Mind Drain, uh, because it's a generic Floodgate. And Triple Heavy Storm Duster to deal with the back row matchup a little bit. Um, the main deck's 42 cards. I'm not sure if it's great right now, but I definitely... We'll be taking the deck in a different direction now uh, from the cards we've pulled. I just feel like this probably might be the best that we can work with right now. Uh, so that's the deck profile. Uh, now we'll get into a ton of games which I'm going to be playing. Uh, so I hope we do well on uh, with those. Dual starting, but I'm going to try something a bit new with this and try more of like um, commenting on the whole duel, uh, all of them in one take. It might work out better, it might work out worse. It's just a little experiment. So, we open a fairly okay hand, however, they do ash us. Uh, so, we just make Dweller, and they have Imperm. So, we effectively have no interaction this turn. Uh, and they're on Lunar Light. So, they uh, send uh, a Lunar Light spell card. They use it to add a Lunar Light card. They add um, a Kaleido Chick. They uh, normal it, use its effect to Foolish Burial. Use Tiger to revive. Overlay into um, Raid Raptor, a uh, Raid Raptor Xyz, which allows them to search, uh, summon, and make the Link 2 summoning from deck. They then summon back, make another Force Strix, uh, search another uh, 
her winged beasts. They set a rank up magic. They activate the rank up magic, paying you half their life points in order to make Cyber Dragon Infinity, which they use to steal Hoffiness. Uh, they make Rusty Bardish. They use Tiger to revive another Lunar Light. Uh, the Lunar Light is negated. Um, they summon uh, Zephros. They make Utopia double. And uh, from here, it's most likely an OT. Well, it is an OTK. Um, since we have just no protection. They go Dugaris the Timeless. They go Battle Phase and hit for 83. And that's game one. Uh, game two. Um, we open a not great hand. It can do some stuff. Um, I, I elect to add um, a speaker, making ravenous crocodile dragons, drawing two. Uh, and this was actually a big misplay here. I shouldn't have set any of the back row. I, I might have set. I should have probably set like one. Uh, but I could have kept the other two to discard with ravenous crocodile dragon to have a pop on their turn uh, to actually protect itself. Um, because it has effectively no attack or defense. Uh, we don't draw anything usable, so we just set two and pass. Uh, they go tanky. They have double forbidden droplets. We are not activating monster effects this game. Uh, they send off Galado check. They go battle. We I elect to fiendish train uh, their dweller, which I'm not sure if the right, is the right play. We uh, do not draw another usable card. Uh, they start to combo. Um, I don't know why they didn't make a rank 4 here. They might not have had any like follow up. So they just hit in for 15. Pass. Uh, we don't draw anything. They draw a fractal. They normal the fractal. They go swing for 2000. And 15. And well, another 15. Uh, we draw hoffiness. Which actually turns all our back row online. Uh, they elect to send a negate, which we're fine with. Um, they then go in battle. We go metanoids, which is Book of Moon, and then send. We really should probably get to Element Fusion uh, very soon, just because making the fusions would be really, really good. Uh, we use Sudlek to negate, which allows us to normal Diva. However, they have Forbidden Droplets, so it doesn't matter. Game, this is match number two. Uh, we start by specialing Swap Frog and normaling Deven. Now, I don't know this at this point, but we're against Dino Morphia. Uh, and this hand is okay for them, I think. Uh, one tra uh, trap that sounds great going second. Uh, but this does seem like decent for them. We make Croco Dragon, Dweller, and Hulk, which is two pieces of interaction. They don't really care about Dweller currently. This was. I would say, like, another misplay. I think I was trying to hit a element trap and a monster to gain advantage, uh, but I didn't end up hitting one. Uh, so they go banish three, looking at the top three of their deck. I guess they do care about their extra deck a little bit. If we'd kept the element in hand, uh, I could have instead had a pop, which might have come in useful, maybe. Uh, salvage is really good here. They pay half their life points to fuse. Uh, into Rextrum, who is a pseudo skill drain. They uh, they imperm our uh, ravenous croco dragon. They go Lord of the Heavenly Prison summon. Uh, we make Trishula zero. Uh, we battle swing in. They pay half their life points to destroy Trishula zero, not realizing it has an effect. So we trigger Trishula zero, summoning Trish and negating their entire field and half in their attack points. Uh, we go Abyss Dweller to negate any cards in Grave. That card's negated, and we hit for game. Um, uh, game 2 against Dynamorphia. Uh, we open uh, a fine hand that is good going first, but not great going second. Uh, they proceed to search for trap cards. Miscellaneous Horus is actually a pretty decent include in the main deck. Dino full combo with uh, Dynamorphia, maybe? Uh, I go into uh, Area of the Water Charm with Gentle. Um, they fuse into the fusion that uh, gains attack, well, loses attack equal to your life points, um, and we destroy their smaller monster. Uh, they go normal Diplos, they uh, Diplos send, uh, they hit into Dupe Frog, Dupe Frog, add Swap Frog. 
They pay half their life points to reduce attack points. We take a, a decent chunk of damage. Uh, we add a, a Aqua Spirit. Uh, we draw a Medallion. We normal Aqua Spirit. Sp pardon me. Especially Swap Frog. Uh, they elect to send the Swap Frog here to Grave. Uh, so instead I decide to make a Rank 4. They pay half their life points to reduce our attack. They pay half their life points to Fuse. Uh, I go Salvage to add back 2 for follow-up. And there's not much that we can do to beat two big, effectively unaffected by monster effect monsters. Um, so game 3, we open a pretty bad hand. Uh, I like to send Revealer, which probably was a misplay overall. Uh, I make Hulk, which is fine. Uh, but I can't really do anything from this point. Uh, so I just fill the field with as many bodies as I can. Which I make all three of my link monsters on one on one field, but yeah, not great overall. They open a very good hand. Uh, they uh, normal and set a card and proceed to set four more. I don't know how we're playing through this, but uh, we draw fiendish chain, which is okay. They pay half their life to fuse and then pay half their life to destroy one on their field and one on mine. Uh, they then trigger to summon one back. They then trigger to burn me for 500 and, I believe, send a card. Uh, they summon one back and they set another trap. Uh, at this point, I'm in a very weird position against Dino Mor uh, Morphia. Uh, they Lava Goal on me, which is interesting. Uh, the weird thing with Dino Morphia is it really seems like really easy to win, but if they can gain enough advantage over their trap cards and monsters, it's really difficult to just beat with no monster effects and effectively tons of negation, uh, which kind of does show that life points don't really matter that much in the long run. They end on 60, they manage to reach 63 life points. They hit us for a big chunk of damage. We draw and elect to concede. Uh, for the last match of today, um, I have unfortunately uh, not swapped it yet. So you're seeing from the opponent's view, they are playing invoked uh, invoked, yeah, well you can't see it yet, Invoked Despia, Shadol, Dogmatica. Uh, so they normal Alistair, make Mechaba, Special Ecclesia, uh, add Fleur de Lis, Special Maximus. Uh, Maximus, I like to send Trish Zero and Trish, just because we have the space in extra and we don't really make them. Uh, Crime is not a good draw. Um, I go Medallion to add. Uh, they Schism. And we cannot play through Winder. Uh, and then the final uh, game of today's episode starts. Uh, we normal Diva. And they instantly disconnect. And uh, we take those. Overall, we won two games. Lost five games. We still have no draws. And we have a win-loss ratio of uh, 4 to 8 in terms of matches. Um, still not that great um being honest i am gonna probably actually take the deck in a different direction from the pulls we got today uh, i feel like that we overall got more tr element cards than sprite cards and sprite was what i was originally intending to build but tr elements are still looking incredibly strong and overall could very well just be as strong or even stronger than sprite so I might actually take the deck in a TR element direction because it might end up making the deck better, but who knows? This episode has gone for long enough. Uh, that'll be the end of it for now. Also, uh, like and subscribe because uh, I have not been saying to do that, and uh, you probably should. Uh, bye.